Okay, well, let's first, let's take a look and see. This presentation, we're going to be doing something that we say multi-sensory. So multi-sensory, we're going to be using audio, we're going to be using visual, we're going to be using kinesthetic, tactile, and movement. And why do we use multi-sensory in our teaching methods? We know that if we use different areas of the brain simultaneously, that those neurons that fire together, wire together. So as a learning teaching methodology, we know that it really works, especially with people with any kind of learning disability. But it actually works well with any type of learner. So we all, I suspect since everybody teaches reading here, you know what a phoneme is. A phoneme is that smallest unit of sound in language. So we learned that for k, we have the letter c or k. But there's no meaning attached to that. A morpheme has meaning attached to it. So it is the smallest unit of meaning in a language. So now we're talking about prefixes, roots, suffixes. Morphology, then, is the study of how morphemes are combined to form words. Today, we're going to look primarily at Latin roots and prefixes and suffixes. As your students get further along, you may want to start introducing Greek su uh, suffixes of uh, roots and prefixes also. But today we're going to look primarily at the Latin roots. So to start with, uh, one of the first things we want to do is maybe just introduce um, and brainstorm a little bit with our students. So you could put up on the board for your students or on a piece of paper these three words, disrupting, erupted, and interrupting. So let me ask you, what do you find that these three words have in common? Prefixes. Okay, well they all have a prefix. Do you see anything else common about these three words? The yes. The root rupt, right? Yes, they all have rupt in them. What about um, meaning? Do you see any common meanings at all between anything that's interrelated here? It's that verse. Okay, yeah. They all have something to do with all th something bursting, don't they? So at first, get your students to get involved. Have them start thinking, get them involved in the process. Think about how are they alike, how are they different. They all have something to do with bothering, disturbing, bursting. We find out that rupt is the Latin root meaning break. And we're going to see that most roots in Latin have verb meanings. They're actions. And that's going to make them easier to have gestures and act out. Prefixes, okay, are going to add another little special twist to the word. But we're going to find that they're not as concrete as the roots. And the su suffixes don't usually have meaning attached. They are going to give the part of speech. So it's going to, depending on the different suffix, it's going to make it a noun, an adjective, or an adverb. Uh, the only exception to this is some of your Anglo-Saxon roots, like full, less, they have some meaning attached. But if you're dealing with your Latin roots, they generally don't. So by studying Latin and Greek roots, prefixes, it's going to help us not only with decoding and reading, encoding, spelling, but also our vocabulary growth. So initially, we're going to introduce groups of roots in a group of six. And so we're going to look first at these six um, roots. Rupt, port, ject, press, cyst, and tract. So rupt is the Latin root for break. Well, what other words do we know that have this root <coughs> in it? So we have disruptive. What is disruptive? What's breaking and disruptive? If you have a student that disrupts your classroom, what have they done? <laughs> yeah, they've broken up, yeah, focus, concentration. Corruption, what's being broken in corruption? Yeah, we've broken the law, haven't we? And bankrupt, what's being broken and bankrupt? So we're going to introduce that key word that goes with the root. So with rupt, we have the key word erupt. And like a volcano erupts, breaks through the earth. So in addition to the visual, we're also going to add a gesture. So together, I want everyone, 
Put your pants down. <laughs> and we're going to say rupt, erupt, to break. Okay? Rupt, erupt, to break. Let's do that again. Rupt, erupt, to break. So we have a keyword, we have an audio, we have a visual prompt, and we have a gesture. Okay, our next word is port, to carry. And our key word for port is portable. So a portable radio, briefcase, or iPod, probably if you're working with younger kids, is one that you can carry. So this is, these uh, visuals, by the way, I've taken off of Google Images off the web, so sometimes you sort of you find what's the best image that might fit your audience. So these are ones that I've picked out, but you might find ones that fit your students better. So a portable, so port to carry portable. And we're going to all act like we're carrying something. So let's port, portable to carry. And port, portable to carry. Eject means to throw. Our keyword is eject. If a pilot's plane begins to crash, he can eject and be thrown out of the plane. So, eject, eject, throw. Eject, eject, throw. Eject, eject, throw. Tract means to pull. A tractor pulls a plow. So, and again, depending on your audience and age, you know, you, sometimes you can use little props. So, I actually have a little tractor that I can, like, some those kinds of things. If you have a manipulative, it just adds to it. Uh, but if you don't, and in your case, you can just act like you're pulling something. I'm going to pull my tractor. So, tract, tractor to pull. Track, tractor to pull. Our next root is press. And press means push. So our keyword is pressure. Pressure is to apply force or to push against something. Students may feel pressure to or push to do something at times. So we can push our hands together. Press. Pressure to push. Press, pressure, push. Cyst means to stand. And our key word is resist. To resist something is to stand back against it. So we're going to have everybody stand. So cyst, resist, to stand back. Cyst, resist. Stand back. Cyst, resist to stand back. Here we're adding back has the prefix meaning of back. And so the stand part, the cyst is just stand, but the back is, gets sort of that full meaning of that word resist in there. Now let's try and do our prefixes. So prefixes are a little bit more difficult than the roots just because they're not as concrete. We saw that the roots all had verb action meanings. Prefixes are generally prepositions, so they're not as visual. Uh, we generally can put a gesture with them, though, and that's what we're going to do. So they often suggest location, down, away, between, back. The other thing, again, you can use props. So to get the idea of well, what is a prefix, I can use my dinosaurs to introduce the concept of when did dinosaurs exist? They're prehistoric creatures. Well, what's pre mean? Prehistory. They, before we had recorded history. So we can either use the little dinosaurs to act out some of these, or we can also use hand gestures too. And I'm going to probably use hand gestures with you, but uh, we can see that we could have these dinosaurs do some of these actions also. So we're going to introduce, again, six prefixes. Okay, and again, these are some of your more common prefixes that we're going to come across. We're going to have D, con, D, 
dis, re, enter, and then we're going to have x, which we also see sometimes gets shortened just to e. Okay? So again, we're going to put a keyword with it. So for d, we have descend, down or away. So let's do that together. D, D descend, descend, down or away. D, descend, descend down or away. Con, connect, with or together. Con, connect, with or together. Con, connect, with or together. Dis, disconnect, apart or away. Dis, disconnect, apart, and that actually opposite of also. And you're going to see that some of these prefixes will have subtleties of meaning where there's more than one meaning. So here we see, obviously, it can mean disconnect, apart, but opposite of, like if we dislike something, it's the opposite of liking it. So there you see the other meaning. Re, return, repeat, back or again. Re, return, repeat, back or again. Re, return, repeat, back or again. Enter, interrupt, between, among. Enter, interrupt, <laughs> between, among. Enter, interrupt, between, among. X, exit, out. <laughs> X, exit, out. X, exit, out. Suffixes. Okay, so we're, initially we're just going to introduce three pretty simple suffixes. And again, the suffixes, they give us the part of speech. Uh, nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. Uh, again, we saw that some of the Anglo-Saxons can have some meaning to them, but most of your Latin ones do not. So the suffix if has the meaning of having the tendency. Usually we're going to find it as an adjective. And then we have two, we have ed and ing, which generally give verb meanings, though we can see they can have adjective meanings also. Okay, and so when we put these together, the prefix, the root, the suffix, when we want to read the word and figure out the meaning, we need to start at the back of the word. We start with the suffix. So here an example, disruptive. The if, having the tendency, then we go to the root, to break, and then to the prefix, apart. So disruptive is having the tendency to break apart. OK, so initially when you introduce them, you're going to want to use your visual, your auditory, your kinesthetic. You're going to use all modalities. But then as you practice them more, you can start looking at just a visual drill or an auditory drill. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to do some variations of the drills that we did at the beginning. OK, so our first one, we're going to do a visual drill. OK, and so we're going to hold up the root card and a picture of the keyword. OK, and so then I want you to respond just with the keyword so we have the root, the visual, so I want you now to give me the keyword and the meaning. So we have rupt, erupt, to break, good, okay. Port, Port. portable, to carry. to carry, good. Jet, eject, to throw. To throw. Tracked, to pull. To push. And back. 
Okay, good. <laughs> then we could do just an auditory drill. So with an auditory drill, you say the root, the prefix, and the suffix. So we could start out and just say rupt, enter, in. Okay, then the student is going to repeat that. Okay, say the say say them after me. Rupt, rupt enter, in. in. Okay, now you can flip over your paper and let's write the root, the prefix, and the suffix. And I want you to write the meaning next to each of those. So go ahead and write rupt. What's the meaning of rupt? Uh huh. Enter. What's the meaning of enter? Between. Uh -huh. And then ing, we have just showing that it's happening now. Okay, let's try over a couple others. <clears throat> Detracting. So the prefix is? Detracting. The prefix is? And the root is? Tracked. And the suffix is? Ing. Yes, you have a question? Is there a reason that you break them up in the order that you do root, prefix, suffix, rather than in the order that the word goes? Um, no, you could do it both ways. You could do it either way. And so partly it's for them to start to learn to manipulate uh -huh. the parts because we're, as we, you're going to see a little bit later, we're going to start manipulating these and we're going to see the different prefixes can be mixed with different roots. We're going to come up with all kinds of new words by mixing these different prefixes and roots. So here it's just sort of isolating a little bit the meanings. Um, but you could do it both ways. So like, actually, I started out here with the root, the prefix, and the suffix. But then the next example I gave you, detracting, I actually gave you the whole word. So you can actually, again, as an auditory drill, you can, you can do it both ways. Okay? Consisting. What would the prefix be? Con and the root, cis and the suffix, in. Ject, enter, ed. Interjected. What's the prefix? Inter. And what's enter mean? Between. 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 Ject, to throw. To throw. Okay. Um, repressive. Prefix? Re. Re. The re means back, back. uh-huh, press, to push, okay, repressive, it's to push back, the tendency to push something back. Export, X, out, port, to carry, export is to, to carry out. Okay, so... <clears throat> Again, you can manipulate these words different ways, do them the auditory drills. You can say different parts, have them flip over, identify the different parts uh, of speech, identify the meaning, write them, put them together for a whole word, and then also put down meanings for them. Uh, and you'll see that sometimes the translation will be pretty exact. But oftentimes, it's just is going to hint at the meaning. It's not going to really give the full dictionary meaning. So sometimes you'll need to have kids look up the dictionary meaning, kids or adults, <laughs> look up the dictionary meanings too if they don't already know them. So an alternative uh, auditory drill, OK, is to say the meaning of the root or prefix. So we could say, what is carry out? Mm -hmm. And your response would be? Carry is port, out is X, so carry out is export. Um, what is throw back? Throw, jack, back, re. So if you throw something back, you reject it. <clears throat> Pushed down. Push, press, down, D. If you're feeling pushed down, you're feeling depressed. depressed. Uh, stand down. Stand, sis, down, D. Desist, to stand down. Okay? Pull back. Pull, 
retract, back, re. If you pull something back, you retract it. Okay, you guys are good. <laughs> so again, um, you, it's auditory drill, you say it, you get to the, have them say the meanings and uh, say the Latin roots, then also they can write it on paper. Then you can drop out both the visual uh, and the gesture. So in this case, I would just say the root, and then I would want them to say the key word and then the meaning. So here on this drill, you've got them, you have the answers up there for you on some of them, but <laughs> if I say rupt, you would say erupt to break, port, portable to carry, eject, eject to throw, cyst, resist to stand, uh -huh. track, Tractor. Tractor. Tractor, what's that? <laughs> to pull. Press, pressure, pressure to, push. to push. And again, when picking out your keyword, you don't have to necessarily stay with the keywords that I've identified here. Uh, you may have, if there's a word that your particular student relates stronger to, that may be the word that's your keyword you want to use with that student. I use partly what images I can find too, because certain keywords are harder to find images for. So if you are going to try to do a visual image, sometimes it helps to see what good visual images are out there for that keyword. Mm -hmm. So again, as they get better and better, then we drop out the visual, <laughs> the keyword, okay, and the gesture. So now, what does rupt mean? To break. What does port mean? To carry. What does ject mean? To throw. What does cyst mean? Stand back. To, what does track mean? To pull. And what does press mean? To push. See how quickly you learned all those? <laughs> you guys get an A+. Plus. Okay, now that we've introduced our prefixes, our roots and suffixes, we're going to see that we can mix them up and make a lot of new words with them. We've already been doing a little bit of that already. But now we're going to do this as a group exercise. And, but we, you're going to see, you could modify this to do it one-on-one. -on -one. I'll, I'll show you something a little bit later how we do it one-on-one. -on -one. But now I'm going to need to have you guys come up and participate. Go ahead and take a card. And if you get a prefix, I'd like you to come and stand this side. If you have a root, stand in the middle. And if you have the one and only suffix, you get to be to the far left. So, there we go. We have our prefixes, our roots here in the middle. Okay, so you have to listen and think about what the word parts are saying. If I go to a restaurant and the food is not acceptable, I may feel like throwing it back. I'm going to, where's my prefix? Go ahead and stand up here together, put them together. We have re. Okay. We're going to reject it. If I'm feeling, <clears throat> if, in fact, I may want to go tell all my friends. So I'm going to carry back my experience to them. <laughs> so I'm going to carry it back. I'm going to report it. <laughs> if my friends are smart, they're going to stand back from going to this restaurant. They are going to resist it. <laughs> now the owner's business is falling off. He's feeling so bad that he feels like throwing himself down and crying. He's feeling dejected. Dead. <laughs> because he's really worried that inspectors might show up at his restaurant and they may find he's been using illegal help in the kitchen and his workers could be carried away to the border. They could be de oh, carried up oh, away. They de oh, sorry. De <laughs> they could be de deported. <laughs> Yeah, down, that D has both the meaning of down and away, so yeah. If they find his kitchen dirty, they may tell him, order him to 
stop or stand down from selling any more food. They've given him a stand down, desist order. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now he's thinking it might be better to make a product that he can send or carry out of the country. He might go into the export business. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you all for participating. <laughs> With a larger class, we could have used all six of uh, these uh, roots. But. So anyway, you can see you can do some fun things with them. We could have set these out on a table, and you could have done this just one-on-one -on -one with a student where you make up sort of that dialogue, and then they pick out the individual cards that would make up the... They can also make stories. I mean, you could give it to them. They, you know, yes. Events. Yes. They yeah. Stories. Yes. Up, uh huh. Exactly. And you could see the more you manipulate them, you could see how these parts all fit together, mm -hmm. um, and you could see how the consistency in the prefixes and the suffixes and the roots that uh, we're going to talk about in a little bit too. How for spelling. These larger Latin words are so much easier than your single syllable mm -hmm. Anglo-Saxon words, trying to spell mother, brother, or love <laughs> versus you know, disruptive. It seems like it would be a more difficult word, but not, once you start seeing the patterns and the, the consistency, uh, it helps, again, not just for the breaking it down for the reading component, but it also will really help your students with spelling. So, yes? And then I were wondering, what age group do you usually do some of these exercises with? So Probably morphology is usually starts at around, this usually starts about fourth grade level on up. Okay, I, again, it depends on your students. Um, but morphology is it's good to introduce starting fourth, fifth, sixth grade. So for spelling, um, we can do this as a spelling exercise. So we say the word disruptive. What's the prefix? Yes. Write it. Okay, what's the root? Yeah. Rupt, write it. What's the suffix? Yeah. Write it, okay. So you can see how uh, this is going to really help them with spelling. Okay, another exercise that we can do, okay, is I make word rings. So if it's, and this, again, is really good for younger students where these, some of these words will be new words to their vocabulary also. So I like to use index cards, okay, and um, on the front I'm going to put the whole word, so here I have the word contraction, okay, then on the back, and actually I think I show this on the next slide, okay, I'm going to put in green the prefix, in black the root, and the suffix at the end. So here we have, and I didn't introduce the ION to you today, but that's obviously a very common suffix. Uh, when it's, you can see that the T and the ION get split up when you're looking at the root, but so, because we're going to pronounce that as shun. But so the ION at the end means the act of, tract, pulling, and re, back. So we do it as a crisscross so that the kids see, or your students see the meanings of it also. Now then if the meaning is slightly different than this literal translation, then I will write across the middle of the card the dictionary definition if it varies slightly from this. <clears throat> and so we do a whole word. We, like on this one, let's, for example, I have, we had contraction, I have retract, we have extraction, here I have rupture, corruption, here we did the root vince, so we have convince, invincible. Here we, it was the root gress, digression, regression. This one was seller, which means fast, decelerate, accelerate, vent, which means to go, circumvent, to go around, circumnavigate, to sail around. Okay, so you can just get an example as you go farther and farther and farther along. But the word ring's nice because it's, it, it's theirs too. This is something you do for each individual student that's uh, personalized to them. You flip through it from time to time, you review the meanings, and they also can 
break them apart and see each of the parts of the words. So, and this is a variation then on what we did before where we, I had you come up to the front of the room and manipulate the word parts, but you could do it again with individual index cards. And so I put the prefixes in green on the prefix cards. So you could lay these out on the table, the prefixes. So we have this, enter, X, re, D, and then you could have the roots, okay, in black on the index cards. And you could have certainly done that with these larger ones. I've did printed them out in the different colors. I just, with my printer, I did them just all in black, but it would have been nice to have had those prefixes in green there also. So again, so I have my individual cards, tracked, port, press, eject, rupt, and cyst. And then we have the three suffix cards. So just the same way you did the, the exercise where we came up to the front, you could lay these out in front of your student, like this on the desk. And this would work very well, just one to one. And say, OK, well, which words here mean pull together? Okay, so they would have to look for the pull, the track, together. It's my con, which I seem to be missing. <laughs> <laughs> to contract something is to pull it together. What do we do with a contraction? Mm -hmm. We take two words, drop out a letter, and we pull it together. Okay? Uh, when it gets cold outside, uh, metal, uh, when it's hot, it expands, but when it's cold, it contracts, it pulls together. Okay, so just, again, manipulating word parts, we're manipulating meanings, so that they're seeing how these meanings also can be uh, played with. Okay, so lots of different activities you can do, and just, I think, as um, you suggested, uh, have them make up their own stories, have them make up their own sentences, when they make up their own sentences, their own stories, they take ownership, and they're going to be more likely to hold on to it also. So these are just other activities. Uh, write sentences of their own with each of the words. Uh, write stories with several of the words. You, they can do illustrations, do their own illustration. Instead of you making the visual, have them make the visual. Okay, because, you know, printing out these visuals and finding them, that takes time. <laughs> make them do the work. So, Identify a keyword with them. Have, especially if you, a lot of your people with learning disabilities have incredible right hemisphere creative artistic abilities. And so a lot of the students you work with may be very artistic and visual. Let them create their own visual. Again, it gives them more ownership. Uh, again, in the classroom, you can have them act out the meanings of the roots and other students can guess what the root is. Words basically are made up of these little chunks. They're made up of a prefixes. And so especially as we get to our larger vocabulary in English, I think we have like about 60, 70 percent of our words come from Latin roots with prefixes, suffixes, so that they learn to manipulate them. Because for especially somebody with a learning disability, they see a 10 letter, 12 letter word, and they just see that as this massive word. And they don't realize, no, you know, it's just really made up of these small little chunks of words that each have meanings. And so once they get comfortable with recognizing those chunks and start to see the patterns, it really makes, like I say, the reading and spelling component pretty good. Um, so, and this again, it's sort of like the idea of, we talk about phonemic awareness and being able to manipulate the sounds with individual words. So we're when at a younger, you know, when they're first starting, we're manipulating phonemes, you know, k, at, cat, okay, change the k to a b, you know, b, at, bat, okay, you know, change, uh, so change the a to an i, b, it. That's phonemic awareness and that's manipulating the phonemes within sound. And that's the beginning stage. You don't, this is not where you start. <laughs> so this is, this is for, this is, you know, 
uh, morphology, morphemic awareness. This is a little bit more advanced level. But once you get your students to the point where they uh, can have pretty <coughs> good phonemic awareness and are reading the going past one syllable words and really going into two and three syllable words, then you can start looking at adding morphology to them.